Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. We've got a couple updates on a couple cars, and we're going to talk about this really cool STSV right after this. So the theme of this week, as we're working here in the shop, is Car Wizard, somebody else worked on my car, and it's messed up even worse than it was. Can you fix it for me? That seems to be what's going on in the shop this week. We just recently seen the 73 Stingray. We're still working with that. I want to show you guys some updates on that. But this was just brought in. It's a 2006 Cadillac STSV. It's been to a shop. It's had some work on top of the engine, and then they ended up with check engine light and codes that weren't there before. And the guy was like, okay, just stop. I'm taking it to Omega. So here it is. And we're going to pop the hood and show you some of the things that we found and go over the car, let you guys check it out. So I've got the hood open, I'm gonna call Michael over. He actually diagnosed this, has been looking at it, and he got to the bottom of it. So I turned Michael loose on this one and have him diagnose and check out the codes. And what did you actually find on the codes? So I found two fault codes, Wizard. I found a P0069, which is a barometric pressure correlation fault. I also found a P0112, which was an intake pressure sensor fault. Uh, the intake pressure sensor uh, was pretty easy to solve. I found out that a couple of wires had been switched when they were putting in a new sensor. Uh, so I swapped those wires and I was able to get that one taken care of. But I'm still looking at this barometric pressure correspondence fault. And that's kind of where we're at right now. We found the solution to the intake air temperature sensor. Michael checked out the wiring. And as you can see, I don't know if the previous shop did this or, or what's going on here. But let me show you something here. It's been spliced in with all these butt connectors and, and wires. I imagine it's because that's what they had to do to make something work with this cold air intake. I'm not too sure why they did that, but two of these wires were switched around and that was causing a code to the intake air temperature sensor and the computer was not happy. Michael was able to pull the pins out of this connector and just switch them around and the code went away and it's re registering intake air temperature properly now. But we've been fighting the the Barrow boost sensor correlation issue and we've checked the wiring, Michael has checked all the different readings and everything seems to be checking out, but it's still, whenever you turn the key on, you, sh you should have the Barrow, the map sensor and the boost sensor all should match in their readings before you turn the engine on. And it's showing on the boost sensor that it's min uh, minus reading into the red, it has a little red number. We did try a new sensor to see if that's the problem. Didn't solve a thing. Same issue. And we've been in contact with the customer and found out that the previous shop had been in there in the ECM and they've been turning features on and off, like tunes or modifications. And this is where it really gets kind of crazy because how do you diagnose software that's been tampered with? I mean, I can't see, I can't get in there and look at that. I'm not a tune shop. So we're going to go a little bit further with this and see if we can verify that it is in the ECM. He may have to take it back to where he had this work done and have them turn it back on. Or it may have to go to a dealership if, it's, if something's really messed up in the ECM. It may have to be just reflashed with fresh software and bring it back to stock. What exactly has been done, we're not sure. So me and Michael, especially Michael, has spent quite a bit of time trying to figure this out and it's, it's kind of sickening, I guess, to think that so much time has been spent because somebody turned something off in the ECM and didn't say anything about it. Or that's, that's kind of a kind of a bummer. It only came in with two codes, but he says when he drives it, it seems like it's misfiring or it shows a misfire. And I could see that because the boost sensor is not showing anything or doesn't show the proper reading. And he had his air temperature sensor wasn't working at all. It was backwards. The terminals were backwards. So we're going to continue on with this and see if it's an ECM issue. If it is, it's going to have to go elsewhere. We did solve his air temperature sensor and we should get him back on the road. Hopefully if we can figure out the ECM issue. If not, like I said, it's going to have to get fixed elsewhere. But while we're here, let's take a look at this cool engine. It's a 4.4 liter supercharged V8. When these things are running properly, they are very, very fast. Here's the supercharger on top. And it's had, you can see this cold air intake installed, a little bit better airflow. But these are really cool. There's CTSVs, STSVs, 
all kinds of different V's, I guess you call them. But every one I've ever driven was very, very fast, very powerful. So this car is really cool and it's very powerful, but it's a different kind of power. This is American muscle. It's just raw, rough power. When I've driven these and you get on it, it really does pull you back in your seat, but the engine's kind of raucous and rough. It's not like an AMG, like a CL55 or something crazy that's very powerful, especially like a CL600 twin turbo. Silky smooth and scary fast. It's refined. These engines aren't refined and they're not meant to be. It's just pure American muscle. If you get into an old, old school hot rod, it's not silky smooth. It's just raw power that pulls you back in your seat, loud, rough. That's why they sound the way they do. But it is a very cool car. For what it is, for what it's meant to be, it's really cool. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look around the car. This one's in pretty good shape. It has a little bit of little things that could be corrected over time. But the paint's in pretty good shape. It does have a carbon fiber, I think this is a wrap that's on top, on the roof. It looks like it was well done. And it's got the stock silver paint. I do see where the key lock is. It's missing a little bezel that goes here. That's not really that expensive to fix. That's something you'd find on eBay, and you might have to wait a little bit to get it, but that's going to be the cheapest route. There is, looks like a little, a gou that's a pretty good gouge there. I can actually, pretty deep. Not too sure what happened there. And we do see a dent here, a nice little dent. Here we have a carbon fiber wrapped spoiler on the back. It actually looks really good. Paint's peeling on the bumper here a little bit. And also by the rear window, there's some clear coat peeling. This side looks pretty good. I don't see any gouges or anything bad. And maybe a little bit of peeling on the front bumper. It looks like maybe some parking stalls have been hit or something on the front bumper there. So all in all, it's actually a really cool car. And there are some little flaws here and there that could be corrected. But I don't think the, the moral of the story on this car is to be absolute perfection. It's performance. This guy likes to zoom around in this car. He likes the power. I totally get that. He bombs around in it. It's not meant to be a museum piece. And it's also 16 years old, so there's going to be some flaws here or there. But this is a really cool ride. It is very, very fast. So let's go ahead and move over to the Corvette. I want to show you guys some more updates on that. So in the previous video on this car, we've seen that the front main seal on the transmission was leaking. I had Junior Mint actually remove the transmission, and we took a look at the front main seal, and it was wallered out really bad. And it was fairly new seal, but it was just oblong, really ovaled out, like the torque converter wasn't centered. But it did say in like a paint marker or a pin on the top of the transmission, it said 89 Camaro 5 liter 305. So that was the transmission that they used to make this all work. It's a 700 R4. In order to mate that to an LS motor, there has to be a spacer on the nose of the torque converter, just like this. This fits on the flywheel, and the torque converter fits into that. The problem is, when I put this into the crankshaft, Actually, it is the crankshaft where the flywheel goes. It was so loose like this. You can never get your torque converter centered. If you, kill, if you don't get the torque converter perfectly centered and then bolt it in, it's going to move around in the seal and oblong it and mess it up. And that's what happened here. This, this was so bad that I could not reuse this. And I took a piece of aluminum, and I'm going to show you guys what I did. So rather than spend so much time trying to search for one of these spacers, and then it may not even fit correct either. I decided to take a piece of aluminum bar stock and hand make one. I spent a few years as a machinist. I wrote programs for Swiss turn lathes and set up the machines. I also did machine work as well. I got a lot of experience. These are little things along the years that I've accrued as knowledge that I can combine with mechanic experience I have. And it just, I guess that's where Tyler gave me the name wizard, is that I have this whole skill set that most mechanics don't have that's not even based on mechanics, just like this. So I have the old one in the lathe. I just want to show you guys how it works. This is my little cheap lathe. It's not anything fancy, but it does the job. I cut a small piece of aluminum and chucked it up and 
this was the result of it. You can see all the chips everywhere. Then all it does is you turn the knob and you can come over. So all you do is put a piece of metal in the lathe. If you know, I mean, you have to know what you're doing. It just, it has power feed. I'm not going to use it here, but you just move the tool along the piece of metal and it cuts it. Like so. To make the center hole, I use this, it's a drill chuck that fits right here. And you turn this wheel and it, drill, it pushes the drill into the middle of the part. And then I use a little boring bar and then and went in there and finished out the size. To get the measurements I needed, I just used the old one for as far as how wide it is, the finished diameter on the outside. I left it a little bit thick on this ring here so that I could just barely shave enough off little by little until it fit tight in the crankshaft and that's what I've done. It doesn't have to be down to the tenth of a thousandth, it just needs to fit tight in the uh, where the flywheel is on the crankshaft. It needs to fit tight in there and be concentric. I was able to get that done by using this this machine and making my own tool. So I got the transmission back in with the adapter that I made and unfortunately it still leaks. The leak is greatly reduced now. The bushing that resides behind the front main seal on the transmission I believe is worn out from the last time when it was oblonged and running out of round. But this has an 89 Camaro transmission. The torque converter has a different brand. I don't even know where it came from. And then we're putting it on an LS motor. There's so many things that are not jiving, that are not, they're not coming together right. I'm gonna recommend this guy take it to a transmission shop or a custom shop because getting into custom fabrication and stuff, I can do it, but the cost for me to do it is gonna be so much higher than somebody that has all the equipment, all the tools, and people that have done this types of swaps over and over and over, they're gonna know exactly what they're doing. We are gonna get his AC fixed. Unfortunately, we didn't have a 100% seal leak on this. I, but like I said, I believe the bushing is bad. It maybe the transmission needs to be rebuilt. Maybe it's never been rebuilt. Who knows? But I'm not going to go any further and spend a whole bunch more time on it. We got it greatly reduced. Before we get started on this, I wanted to apologize to you guys for the noise. They're actually resurfacing the road right in front of my shop, and it's going to be hours and hours and hours of them doing it. I can't tell them to stop. I also don't want to stop the video and cut you guys short, so there's not much I can do about the booming noise in the background, guys. I apologize. We do have the Lotus Esprit Turbo running. It's alive again. The owner, Bill, tried to do his own clutch slave cylinder, master cylinder. You're not too sure that it got done right. That's one last thing I need to tackle. If I can get that fixed, then we won't have to remove the transmission or do any of that stuff. And I don't, I'm thinking I can get it fixed for him. Okay, we'll finish talking about this. I know you guys can see the, the Country Squire, the woodsy wagon in the background. That's not ready to be updated yet. We got a lot of cool information and Hoovy is going to be the one updating you on that. But as you heard, we got it running again. It's alive. The owner Bill has heard it. I sent a video clip. He's very happy. He said it sounds great. He has a laptop computer that has the, the software to look at all the sensors on this, on this older 95 model. He would like to be here and look at all the data before we get too far further in finishing this thing up. I totally understand that. It's his car and that's what he'd like to do and we're going to honor that. So when he gets time, he's very busy right now, he's going to come out, we're going to log the data on it. He wants to see everything's good to go and then we'll finish up the clutch. But I'm very happy that it's alive again. No more smoke rings out of the exhaust pipe, no coolant coming out of the exhaust. I did have a pressure tester on the reservoir, the coolant reservoir, while it was running, when I first got it running. No pressure builds up when it first starts. It's, it's, it's great. The head gasket solution is done. So that's where we're at with the Lotus. It's getting very close to being out of the shop. I'm very excited for that. And I'm excited for Bill because he wants to drive this car again. Apologize again for the noise, guys. There's not much I can do about it. But I thought you guys would like to see what we found on this STSV and the direction we're going with it. Gave you guys a little update on the Corvette and also some good news on the Lotus Esprit Turbo. It's alive again. I'm very excited about that. 
If you're interested in what kind of tools I use to get all these projects back on the road, check out my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that now. We've got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.